Mike Gill, State of Corruption. What you're going to see is a very important video. It's going to show you the witnesses and evidence of the depth of corruption, not just in my state, but in every state. The corrupt are fearful and they're desperate. What gives us a real opportunity? There's an opening here and I'll show you how they're exposed. State of Corruption had nearly 300,000 followers. The corrupt had it shut down. Do you know why? They were fearful. We're driving fear into drug cartels. Let's take the drug cartel. You remember listening to message from the cartel? Sure, they threatened me and my children. But they also told us they were fearful. They were fearful. For instance, Bill Shaheen, the head of this network of protection, taking over their industry. They were telling us there's levels higher than him. Don't you want to know how large this operation is? I believe it to be the largest cartel in the country. And they're fearful of losing their position. They're fearful of going to jail. They have a $274 million judgment. And they won't touch anything that belongs to me. Now you think about that. That's fear. So, what you'll see in this video, and why this is an Attorney General's operation, who gave us, to, offered us the settlement? Bill Shaheen, the head of this network? Alex Walker, who tried to have me murdered and part of the head of this network? But also, the banking department, who I said was laundering drug money and the money for the corrupt. The Department of Revenue, who extorted me for my silence, and they wanted a release. Well, now you'll see two notices from the AG's office for the DRA. Remember, the same people who offered me 50 million are now threatening and scheduled an auction for January 4th, this coming year, to auction off my house, auction off my building and my business, not the drug cartel, they only look stupid. They're smart enough to not to mess with me. But the AG's office is in deep, and the cartel went to Shaheen. You're not putting this in front of this guy. You take his stuff. So you know what? Stick it. Come after this. I'll put you in jail. I want you to pay particular attention. The banking department another entity that offered us the 50 million settlement. They want to take my business license too. This is what extortion looks like. Well, you can stick it too. Now, let's think about this. The same day we get these notices to auction off my property, we get a notice from the Supreme Court with Walker. Now, Walker, we give them all the evidence of the Supreme Court that Walker was my attorney. They admitted the guilt, in fact, the lion's share of the guilt and they offered me 50 million. Do you think it's coincidence these birds all land in the nest at the same time? They use, and don't forget, what they were offering me 50 million for was for extorting me from my silence. This is what happens when you don't remain silent. And this is what you've got to do. If you're going to beat this corruption, you've got to have courage. You have to have no fear. I don't have fear of dying. I don't have fear of losing my property. I knew going into this the cost. What I need you to realize is the opportunity that this cost has given us. I want you to know, these last months I've been busy. Busy building a network of delivery of witnesses and evidence to every news agency in this country, every investigative reporter in this country, all senators, congressmen, representatives in this country, even the corrupt ones, they are going to get this evidence, I promise you. So please share it. Tell your friends. Mike Gill, State of Corruption. I cannot tell you how important this video is. You've seen me do setup videos for this video. You see me delivering evidence to the FBI, U.S. Attorney's Office. You see me
packaged envelopes and said, the video, let's get them all. This was mailing evidence to all agencies within the IRS and the AG's office, Sessions' office. I was setting up these criminals. Why did you see that the FBI returned the package and surrounded? Why did you see the U.S. Attorney send Brian Toomey's computer and cell phone back? They are protecting the evidence that I can show you here. What do we need? Method? Motive? Well, I'm going to show you how they're doing it. I'm going to show you why. But I'm going to tell you what we can get. This, this, is, this is extortion on a federal level with the IRS. This is the corruption throughout the states. What I'm going to show you is a model of corruption between the Attorney General's office in the state, the U.S. Attorney office in the state, the, the Depart uh, Department of Revenue in the state, the Banking Department. When we said, let's get them all, this was the setup for this. I knew what we had was conclusive evidence. We don't have to improve all the other stuff. We just have to drive a nail right through their heart on this. And this is the piece that does it. This is what's worth $50 million. And we're going to go over that settlement because it's a telling statement of what they are afraid of and who they're afraid of and the path we're going to take. So let's take that path. Again, let's not make this about politics. I'm giving this to President Trump and Attorney General Sessions, regardless if it's Republicans and Democrats. This corruption is affecting all of us from the state to the federal level. I'm going to show you how we can take this down. This was years in the doing and work that I can't even begin to tell you. So let's start the motive. Ready? Walker I caught corruption, Ponzi scheme, covering up insurance claims. What I, he did was he needed a release when I caught him, which is what he asked for. And I'm going to split screen it. You're going to see that he asked me for a full release to take care of the IRS and the DRA issue. There were issues because they're extortion issues. See? The IRS sue him, you know. Leverage them for money, DRA leverage for money, which are what they're doing still today with the DRA. It's a good thing we caught the IRS on tape. I'm going to remind you that maybe you play a snippet of it so you remember. Uh, good times, Tim. This is going to be your case. Huh. I, I'm going to call him, Chris, and I'm going to tell him, like, we have a plan. We have an undercover here. So we haven't heard from them. But DRA is threatening to take over the, take the, sell my properties. Let's go on now, okay? But this brings us to Walker. This is Shaheen and Gordon, and Bill Shaheen, the husband of the Senator Gene Shaheen, who has been cited for targeting enemies with the IRS. This minute when they were trying to make a deal with me, all those years before, they didn't go to the taxpayer advocate. Well, they did now, only to find out, as you can see, the taxpayer advocate apologizing for timing issues and they'll process my forms immediately. You see, they were corrupting them. They stopped them. Except for when they did this, they assumed that I'd take the 50 million. When I didn't, they got caught in the spot. Right. So then they had to start corrupting accountants. Here's a, here's a, a my accountant in a deposition. A legal deposition. Mark Cohen. You ready? Here's the question. I have emails that you have never met with Larry Schwartz. Would that be untrue? He objected. Because you met with them, didn't you? All I know is I had meetings with Larry Schwartz. Why is that important? Was Larry Schwartz was the accountant on the thing. On, so he knew that we settled with the IRS. So Schwartz was giving Cohen the information for the taxes. Well, I asked you, he said, did you recognize the documents? Emails that I was getting from you denied it. Perhaps it was a different meeting. Well, this meeting, particular meeting, it might have been the first meeting, very early meeting. Do you remember you asked Mr. Schwartz, why did he put that on the K-1? Meaning Cohen's question was, if we didn't have a hobby issue regarding the races, because we were a business, why was it on the K-1? This was Schwartz's answer to Cohen. Do you remember what he said? 
He said, yes. I said, what do you mean, yes? He said, the counselor told me to put it on the K-1. Now, who's the counselor? Walker. See? Because if you didn't put it in the, in the K-1, then the DRA wouldn't have a case, which is why the Banking Commission tried to change it. Remember? Follow the head when everything was redacted. We're going to get back to Dickhead in a minute. But do you remember the banking department, uh, Jerry Little, finding me? And I said, listen, they tried to change the notes, the classifications. This is why. Because those classifications would put them all in jail. Well, then what happened is they turn around and try to make the settlement because we got them. No, I don't have just one settlement offer. We'll put this one. This order was Barrington. You remember me chasing Barrington on a couple different videos about the 50 million? It's the only thing that they won't deny because I have it signed in writing. But be careful of what they ask for here. You ready? They want it all proportionately. So they want to settle a suit, want all of them, knowing that the cases are organized crime. How do you do that? You leave one rat, the others out. Knowing that they can't do this, I believe I don't believe this sincerity. What they did then come back was it was organized. We had to give them all releases. It would say here's the thing, it would settle all little litigation. Meaning I had to give everybody a settlement. Now let's remember now, let's go back to the settlement. Again, who is asking for the releases? Okay? So now you understand. They leverage me criminally. They turn around and wanted me to settle, offered me the 50 million. But this is who the releases are Alex Walker. Well, he had dealt with the IRS and DRA. Hyder. He went through Hyder to give me the release. That's the document I showed you first. Maurice Gilbert and Sparkman. They worked for Divine Millimet on the IRS and DRA. Lauren, Larry Schwartz and Grant Thornton. Schwartz was the accountant and Grant Thornton was the company they worked for. Wow, see, we're still tax related. This is why I'm saying we can pierce their heart. Tim Powell of the IRS, he was in on it. R.P. Saunders and Bill Shaheen, they're who I brought the IRS first and they're the ones that created the leverage using Gene Shaheen, the senator, right? So let me see, in the companies, Williams and Conley handled the tax returns. Divine Millimat handled the tax return. Banking department leveraged me and tried to change the, the tax returns. The Department of Revenue, they're the ones that were leveraging me. You see? So in other words, that those releases tell a story. Well, let's keep going into the story then. Then what I did was not take their deal and said, you know what, I'm going to put you all in jail. And I went to the criminal division of the IRS. That's right. And I met with a gentleman named Tom Morley. Now you're going to see this form, all right? And this form was a form that I wrote back to the agent in charge, O'Malley, after I met Morley. Mike Gill had a meeting in a plastic box with special agent Tom Morley from Boston and another woman who named she didn't give me. He asked me to write, to write because at the meeting, Agent Morley and the woman brought had refused several times to Mr. Gill, give Mr. Gill business cards. This is not in the third, it was my attorney writing them back. So they wouldn't give me their business cards. And this turns out to be Morley. I am hopeful that someone in your office will provide us with the information, confirm that Agent Morley is in fact an agent for Titka. Confirmation that the woman accompanying Morley was also an agent for Titka. What I'm saying to them is that I'm a little nervous when they're not giving business cards. They wanted it to go away. They knew they were going to act criminally. The, the person was, was Tom Morley, right? And the person that we, they, he was responded to, you'll see here, is Tim Campus. Now what I want you to remember now, we'll put up that little, that 
when they forgot to hang up the phone, when I reported that Curtis Morley, the accountant that's been taking all this IRS information over the years, they forgot to hang up, and they told us we had a mole. So what this means is, let's grab this now. It means the highest level, the criminal division of the IRS is acting corruptly. Wow. So that's the IRS. We got the Department of Revenue acting corruptly. We've got the banking department dead to rights. That's why everything was redacted, remember? We've got Alex Walker and Bill Shaheen and the law firms of Shaheen and Gordon and Divine Millamat. So let's start adding it all up. All right. So now, when I didn't take the deal, they sued me. The, the DRA. Now, who was it on there? Well, let's take a look. Richard Head, who worked previously for Divine Millimat and McLean. And the Divine Millimat lawsuit and the people offering me money included McLean Law Firm. So that means Richard Head, out of the AG's office, had conflicts all around. Not just Richard Head, though. Elizabeth Leahy, who's the lawyer on the case right now, who if they're suggesting to auction off the property, except for guess who she worked for? McLean Law Firm. <laughs> Let me go further. You know the Supreme Court judge that kicked out the case? Even though the judge, Judge Anderson, right? Summary dismissal, no evidence, no witnesses, just like Delker with Walker. Isn't that funny? None of them can have witnesses or evidence. You know where she came from? McLean Law Firm, convoy. And she was the clerk for Judge Devine. Again, conflicts up and down. She just resigned. Or can you say, get out of Dodge? Now let's think what we just did again now. We just incriminated the Supreme Court in the state. We just got the AG's office. You know what about Elizabeth Hurley? We were sending the criminal information into Boston, I'm mean, into Washington, Department of Justice. I was having Terry Lemieux. You're gonna see a little receipt. You know what really was going to? Elizabeth Leahy. How's that? She was intercepting all our criminal information because they own Carrie Lemieux. So we've got the AG's office, banking department, the IRS, the criminal division of the IRS, right? And the banking department would also give us a governor who knows exactly, right, Sununu? Because I told you. Another little clip. $15 million to be quiet. No, I had that. I put it on the, on the internet. You'd like to see it, Mr. Sununu? Would you like to see it? No, I didn't think so. So it's all there. Liberty International. Right. All I have to do is be quiet. But they're protecting the people that are killing our children. They own the treatment center. This is involved. This is the laundering of that money. Any questions? I didn't think so. I told Sununa right to his face, the drug laundering, this is why. And this is why they can't get into the banking department. It would give you all this. This is a model across the state and across this country in each of our states. It is corrupted and they use the federal government to target us. Now, let's see if we had a case, remember? Anderson. Now this is going to get us the organized crime of the judges. I am telling you, this is a Rembrandt. If you're listening to it, it is a Rembrandt. Anderson needs to have a summary judgment at this point because he hung himself out to dry. They're bluffing. Any of you guys play poker? We're going to auction off your house. Go fuck yourself. How's that for bluffing? Right? That's why Anderson didn't take any information. That's why Anderson had the septic issue. That's why Anderson had Wiggins and Nora and then tried to get our money out of our account and our rest warrant. Because they didn't want me to tell you what's happening right here. They didn't want this video to be made. Now, you know why they can't take a, any evidence? Because I have here Eileen Hurley. She is a certified document examiner. Right. You're going to see all her credentials. I mean, since 1987, she is one of the country's 
foremost experts. You're going to love this. You know what some of her material was used as evidence? Judge Delker. No kidding, it's right here. I'll post that too. Right? Judge Tina Nadeau. Wow, remember that name. You know who she is? She's the one who assigns all the cases. Her family goes back 50 years with Shaheen. Why do you think we get Delker and Francois and Anderson? Nadeau. No, they used him too. They used her. Now listen, let's see what that signature on that tax return that made that DRA leverageable. She turns around and says, her conclusion, based on the evidence contained in this handwritten, it is my opinion of this document examiner to the greatest degree of professional certainty that Michael Gill of known material did not execute that signature on the questionable document above. And that document is the state DRA tax return right there. You see, they couldn't have me see it because I knew it would be untrue. That's why Cohen said it shouldn't be on the K-1. But Walker told him to put it there. Walker only told him to put it there to leverage me to get their releases. Even with 50 million, I said no. So in other words, this is proof, and it's also proof why Anderson can't have witnesses or evidence. And that's the same thing with Delta. You see? It would put them all in jail, including the judges. So let's just recap shortly what we've got. We've got the banking department. In, and I'm telling you, this goes on in every state. The AG's office, the cover team, in every state. We got them cold. We got an organization of corrupt judges and how they work coordinatedly. And not just in my state, but this is cinches it. The IRS, we only have them on tape. We only have them asking for a release. See, the DRA themselves? I mean, this guy Gilbert, who was on for a release, you know what he was prior? The supervisor, managing supervisor of the DRA. Right. This has been a years of an operation of cover-up. And we have them nailed. Nailed. We deal with them federally. We deal with the corruption through our courts, law enforcement. This breaks it down. This is indisputable. 